You know what the problem with your freedom is? There's no way for me to get free of it. Good evening, everybody. Hell's Unicorn here once again. It's been a fairly long time since I've actually called out another particular user or a couple of users just to say something to them. Not call them out so much in the sense of, you know, you want to fight or you want to, you know, g engage in some form of drama, but more just saying, you know, this is what I think about something. I haven't done a whole lot of video responses lately, mostly because I've been busy and also because a lot of the material that has been put out of late has actually been a bit disheartening. Not the Ron Paul campaign stuff. That's just, you know, you win some, you lose some there. But more with the general tenor and tone of the discourse within the liberty movement. Tyrants will be tyrants. That's my mentality on the people on the other side of the liberty argument. But when it comes to people within the liberty mar uh, movement who are screwing up big time, it's an entirely different matter. It really hits home for me. Especially when it's people that I expect better from. Now, part of my problem with what's going on here with regards to these two particular users is not so much their respective opinions on religion or the fact that they've made those opinions known and that they've argued in favor of them. It's the fact that a good amount of the content is dealing exclusively with the religion topic and it's juxtaposing it in such a way that it is a prime point of the broader liberty debate. Now for somebody who wants to have a practical outcome here where we don't have an actual nationwide financial collapse and where we are able to salvage what little we have left right now and hopefully expand upon it in a non-chaotic fashion, it really gets on my nerves when people forget their priorities and they start doing stupid shit either at the national, state, or local level. And I have to say that of late, both Adam Kokesh and Ridley Report have been doing just that. I want to ask all of you a question. I'm going to give you a hypothetical, and I am going to draw, in this case, from the latest Ridley video that I saw as inspiration. Let's say we have a small town up somewhere you know, out in, let's, let's say it's out in God's country, and let's not use Rhode Island because everybody associates Rhode Island with more, you know, progressive, you know, we're more rationalistic types, so to speak. Let's go down to, let's say, Alabama. We've got a community of about 2,000 people. 1,999 of them are good, god and Baptist folk. Let's say for the sake of argument that all of these God-fearing Baptist folk happen to be the same kind of God-fearing Baptist that Ron Paul is. Let's say that these people have kind of a, you know something, we don't agree with the whole homosexual thing, but whatever, we're not going to pass any laws about it. Let's say that they have a somewhat moderated view on birth control and have a negative view of just abortion, so to speak, with maybe the exception of the morning after pill. And maybe let's, just to make it a little bit more agreeable, let's say maybe even first trimester abortion, they'll be like, we don't approve of it, but we're not going to send the cops to track you down if you get it done. And let's say these 1,999 people decide, you know something? We'd like to have a nice prayer vigil right in City Hall. We voted for our own town council. We've got our own mayor. You know, everybody's in agreement about this. Let's just go to City Hall and have ourselves a good old time praising the Lord. 
Now let's say that other one person out of this population of 2,000 is somebody who is a very bent out of shape atheist whose dilemma is not so much that she is not tolerated, she is, uh, she's not allowed to do what she wishes. There's no constraints on her liberty per se. Her dilemma is, is that she doesn't have anybody else representing her side of things. She doesn't have anybody else to go with to have a nice little atheist party, so to speak, while they have their little Christian party at City Hall. So she decides to raise holy hell about this, pardon the expression, and she decides to make an appeal to a higher level of government to get this struck down. So in other words, making an appeal to authority to preserve her own personal little subjective definition of freedom against the free expression of the rest of the town, which is unfortunately something that's pretty easy to do nowadays via the court system in particular. My question to you is this. The minority has an equal right to everything with regards to the law and with due process, and an equal right to life, liberty, and property. Does that give that person the right to trump the life, liberty, and property of the majority? And let me pose a different question now also. Is it really necessary to raise a fuss about this when you are just as at liberty to simply brush the chip off your shoulder and move along? When somebody tells me that they believe that aliens are controlling our government, which I don't believe, I don't say, you know something, I need to get a legal injunction to shut this guy up so I don't have to be around his insanity. I can do something a whole lot easier. I can take personal steps to avoid this particular crazy person. Now, if this person becomes a threat to somebody else, that's another matter entirely. But let's say this guy isn't even talking to people. Let's say he's just hanging out the street corner with his sign saying the end is near, the aliens are coming, or whatever the hell. And your big dilemma is that you have to see that every day on the way to work. No, you don't. Your line of sight can be directed at one of the other degree points in the 360 degree circle that you are capable of making with your own feet. Now, there is a dilemma with regards to the notion of public money being used to fund such events if there is a dissenter involved, because that person who is dissenting has to pay taxes. I propose a simple solution to this problem right here. If there is a specific tax that is designated for this sort of thing, exempt all people that are not part of the church. Or better yet, don't use public funds to do it. But now that the then becomes the question with regards to the specific example that is the subject of Ridley's latest video where this one offended 16-year-old girl felt the need to raise holy hell, pun intended, in order to stop a prayer banner being put in a public school. The issue here is not that the town wanted to have a religious-based observance with public money. The issue is, is that they wanted to do this, and this girl is technically part of the community, and she feels that she is contributing to it by being part of that community and paying into the tax code, assuming she has a job. 
the problem here isn't the religious observance, and I would argue it's not that it's being done in public. The problem here is the way the system has been set up. There are two obvious solutions to this issue here. One, alter the system so that people that have a differing opinion are not obligated to participate in said occurrence in any way, shape, or form, and that includes tax money and compulsory school attendance where this thing supposedly is, although I don't think that's a big deal. You can just not look at the banner. Or you can vote with your feet and you can choose to move somewhere else such as the San Francisco Bay Area where more people share your views on the subject. If everybody did that there'd be a lot less trouble in the world right now personally. And I'm speaking as somebody that's not particularly concerned with the notion of living amongst people with differing opinions. It's more living amongst people with differing opinions that feel the need to be busy buddies and mess with everybody else. Having said that, the same is true in reverse. I have the same problem with the Baptists coming over and telling me that I have to tithe to their church because they're the majority party and they control the government. I'd have the same problem if Buddhists or atheists were running the municipality. And I would take one of those two options into account as my means of recourse. Either get the system changed or get out of Dodge. I'm not going to live in a place that's going to require me to do that unless it's impossible for me to move, which, you know, nothing's impossible. But it makes me think about the whole liberty question, and it makes me question whether or not Adam Kokesh and Ridley Report, or Ridley himself, the guy who runs the Ridley Report, if they're really interested in freedom for all or just freedom for themselves. Because the video content that they're putting out is geared towards one part of the liberty movement at the expense of another part. I know it may be tough for people to believe, but there are Christians, yea, even some conservative Bible-believing Christians in the liberty movement. And if you want to have a successful national movement in a country that is basically a mishmash of just about every viewpoint out there possible, you have to come up with a way so that all of these different viewpoints can coexist together in the same movement. And when videos like the ones that Ridley and Adam Kokesh have been putting up are in the mix, that is impossible. If you doubt this, look at some of the angry posts from some of the other users, including myself, although in my case, my posts are directed at other posters that are saying, you know, ridiculously obnoxious stuff that's inspired by the content of these videos. I'm not specifically going after Ridley or Adam yet, although I have decided to unsub from Adam's channel, and I'm considering unsubbing from Ridley Report's channel because I think they're becoming a liability to the liberty movement right now, and I don't want to endorse liabilities. I don't subscribe to PJTV for the same reason. They're a liability. They're version of liberty is insufficient and it's also at odds with a any kind of a universally practical method of attaining a freer and more voluntary society. That's the thing that you guys over in the hardline Christian camp and in the hardline atheist camp of the liberty movement need to understand. There's a practical side to everything. And when you put up obnoxiously pro, let's just say, pro-culturally liberal content and pass it off as though everybody ought to believe it, and we should have legal recourse to make that happen, which is the case in Ridley's video. Or, if you want to go around preaching the good word and getting in everybody's face and telling them that you don't believe in freedom unless you believe in the Almighty you're going to get discord and you're going to get dissonance and eventually the harmony the very frail harmony that exists within the liberty movement will come to an end 
So I'm going to conclude by saying the following. Adam Kokesh, if you want to get my subscription back, which is a possibility, you can knock off all of the trolling Christians with your video content nonsense. All right? It's not playing well with me in and of itself, and but my big dilemma here is that you're alienating other people in the Ron Paul movement. Some of these people may not be firm supporters yet, and you might turn them off to supporting him. And worse yet, you may turn them off to liberty altogether. There's a pendulum effect here. And when somebody gets too obnoxious, they can drive people completely in the other direction. Ridley, reason why I have not un unsubbed to you is because you have not been as obnoxious as Adam has been in the past couple videos. Be that as it may, you're not helping things by specifically focusing on all of the news out there. Well, people say everything is news. Yes, but it's not what you cover, it's what you don't cover. And what you have not been covering of late Ridley is practical ways to change the situation in Keene. You say free Keene, I have no idea how you're going to do that if you set half of Keene against yourself with your content. What you will do if you continue down this particular path. It's time to focus on what matters. And if you want to live in a voluntary society, you have to face the fact that people will volunteer to believe something completely opposed to what you believe in. And if you want that society to flourish, you have to come up with a way so that you and that person can stay out of each other's way when it could become a predicament and to work with each other where you can. That's how societies work. Anyway, until next time, with prudence to myself and benevolence to all of you, good evening.